Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Dallas Stars franchise mode here in NHL 20. So in last episode we had the first half of the season simulation and we are doing pretty solid 19, 13, 5 and 1 so far at January the 1st. As I did suggest near the end of last episode, I decided we are going to be calling up our youngster in Braden Riley from the minors. He was off to a fantastic start down there in the AHL. With 30 points in 34 games, he proved to me he belongs in the NHL, so we called him up, and he actually fits our third line really well. I really actually like this line. You got the playmaker in Keith Drake, you got a power forward in Riley, and then you also got the sniper in Antillo, so I think this line is going to do pretty well, especially with Riley there. And then our fourth line now has Callahan on it, and Ewan is now scratched which kind of sucks, but he is one on one year, I think, left on his deal. Yeah, one year at $2 million, so he might be on his way out eventually. Currently, also at the moment, we do have Pavelski injured, but I believe he is supposed to be back around the end of this month. But our team looks pretty good, and I am very excited to see how Braden Riley could do at the NHL level. If he doesn't perform that well, we could always send him back down. And yeah, but yeah, I'm hoping he does produce well. Because 30 points in 34 games as a 21-year-old in the AHL, that says something that the guy might have a chance to be a really good NHL player. He does also have the elite potential, so I want to give him as good of a shot to make the NHL as possible. Okay, so let's get this season simulated. Let's go all the way up to February the 1st, see how we play with Riley on our team. I'm excited to see if he could start getting a lot of goals, because he does have some really good shooting attributes. And we win our first game with Riley 9-2. So, he just had a, probably a pretty good game, I would assume. And Cullenmore has been injured. Which means we're going to have to put in... I don't think we have two depth defenders. Which is a bit of a bummer. Yeah, we're going to have to probably put a Ford as a defenseman, which is kind of fine. Uh, we'll put in Markstrom, I guess, because he's got the better defensive awareness. Yikes, that looks gross right now, but whatever. And let's see how Riley did in his first game. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Three goals in two games. He might have had a hat-trick in his debut. There was no way of telling that, but holy hell. Okay, so this guy definitely belongs on that third line. As long as he keeps on producing like that. Jeez, three goals in two games. Watch him lead us in goals by the end of the season or something like that. Because, I mean, we don't really have that uh, top-notch score unless it's Antilla, I guess you could say. Okay, so Cullimore is back, which means we could finally get that forward off defense. I normally don't like doing that, but we don't want to call up players from the minors. So, there you go. Okay, so game against the Blues in St. Louis. We win 5-3, to three, good. It seems like we lost those games only when we had the Ford as defense, so, which makes kind of sense. But our offense has been humming since Riley's been in the lineup. Game against the Blues again is a 3-3 tie. Game against the Rangers, and then we got the Oilers and the Jets before the All-Star break, and Pavelski's back, which is huge news. He's definitely going to help give that back end an offensive boost, I think. So there you go, Pavelski. And let's continue to sim. Game against Rangers is an OT loss, 4-3. to I don't know if we're going to make any trades this year or not. I don't think we will, but who knows. Game against the Oilers... 6-1 to one loss, so we've not played good in the last two games. Florida's also fired their head coach. Game against Winnipeg, and that's the last game of this month already. Is a 3 nothing loss, so we kind of dropped off near the end of that month. But we are still doing pretty solid. Because we should be one of the... Yeah, we're third in our division at the moment... Watkinson, Fitzgerald, for foot, and a third. No, thank you. Okay, so we are still in third to start off February, which is good. Let me just make sure Riley's fitting well with the team. He had three goals in those first two games, so 
Let's just see if he's played good since. Four goals in 11 games. That's not bad. He's still plus two and he's got nine pims, so he's definitely a very physical power forward. Something we don't actually really have because the only power forward we had, I think, was Mike Medano, if I'm not mistaken. So we are currently, yeah, we're kind of uh, only a couple points above the last place spot still. Nine points above the Blues, but only four points separating us and Chicago. So we got to start winning some games and get off this little like losing streak we had near the end. Hopefully this all-star break helps, gives our guys a bit of, uh, hopefully it helps them out a bit like that break. Because I know a long break usually doesn't help a lot of players, but who knows, maybe these guys were working hard during that time. So, Milson and Osborne for Bernie Straub and Kyanic. Okay. We do lose another game this, hurt this month. I might have to make some line changes. Uh, no, thank you. I don't like that looks of that guy. That guy, that would just be a depth guy or an AHL guy, even. Hmm. I don't really think we need to make much changes to this team if we want to make any trades this year, but who knows? We have just dropped a lot of games in a row. That's what I mean about this team being really inconsistent. Uh, no thank you. Don't care about making trades like that. There's another trade. Mogilny in a third for Regier in a sixth and a seventh. We do beat Germany 4-2 to two to end our losing streak. And LA has fired their coach, which was long overdue because they only have 12 wins on the season. Game against Vancouver is a 2-1 to one loss. Okay, I'm going to stop the simulation. And we might make some line changes here because we are starting to drop quite a bit of games. And I don't know what the reasoning is. Like if it's our goaltending or defense or what. What lines are minus? So the top line hasn't been that good. Second line's been fantastic. Third line has been good. Fourth line hasn't been that bad. Well, actually, Callahan was on the third before this, so... It's mostly our first line, I think, that hasn't been that well. Let's see, defense. We're playing good offensively. It's just our defense, and, like... We're letting in a lot of goals, but we're scoring a lot, too. So it could be our goaltending. Yeah, it might be our goaltending. I mean, Depenta's an 83. He's been pretty good. And Jaguar has not been as good. Not that I want to trade Jaguar away, but he has not been that good. Like, maybe we want to Penta as our starter and we could trade Jaguar, but I don't think I want to do that. Because Jaguar usually plays pretty good in the playoffs. Okay, so we are only four points above the Blackhawks now. We're kind of sliding a bit in the standings. Wait, am I going to make line changes? Hmm. I don't know what the problem is really with this team then. It could be just keeping the puck out of the net. So I don't know if we really want to make any changes or not. Hmm. Let's take a look at the defense again. Hmm. No, I don't think I want to make any changes. Unless I move Ozlinch up and Patrick down. Yeah, I think I might do that actually. Because Patrick is... 15 points is not bad. Ozlinch has 16, so... Yeah, let's just make that little small change. See if that helps anything. Because Ozlunch is a veteran. Playing him with Cullimore might help out a bit. Because Patrick is still kind of young. He's only like 24, I think. So let's go right to this trade deadline. See if we can win some games now. Because this team has been dropping the ball lately. We need to start winning games down the stretch. And be more consistent. There's another trade, so Jay Wells and Valisley in a fourth head to Florida for Lidstrom and Tavares. Uh, okay, a game against Germany. Come on, boys. End this losing streak, please. Oh my god, we lost again. I don't know what's with this team. Like, we have good first halves of the season, and then it's like February and March. We kind of slide a bit. Like, at this rate, we might end up missing the playoffs if we don't make any trades. I don't know if it was making the uh, roster move with Riley that's bringing his team down or what. So Kimo Timonen has been dealt to the Flyers, which is cool because he actually played there in real life. So that's neat. We do beat Vancouver, which is nice. Game against the Islanders, which is on the road as well. 4-2 to two win. Okay, so there's two back-to-back -back wins. Just got to keep it going, guys. 
game against the Rangers, so I guess we had a New York kind of road trip. And then we also played the Flyers after that. Or not the Flyers, the Penguins. Quinton Byfield's been dealt, okay. Game against the Rangers, who have been really good this season. We lose 3-2. to two. Game against the Penguins, who have been okay. They've been around us, and we win 3-2. to two. So we're playing a bit better. Three wins in our last four games. There's another trade. It looks like that same Mogilny guy has been dealt two times. And Toronto has acquired two big pieces. So Toronto might be a, uh, a potential contender this year. Because, I mean, they had a really good team last year, and except for their depth wasn't that good, like defensively and whatnot. So they could be a contender this year if they put together the right squad, I think. Which kind of sucks because they're in our division. I'm not going to read out all those trades. <clears throat> uh, so we're getting offered Bankinson and Ortiz and a third and a fourth for a first. Dorset, who's a good prospect, and another first. No, thank you. That's a lot of stuff to give up. Game against Germany, though, we do beat them one to nothing, so that's a good defensive game for our team. We haven't actually had a lot of shutouts this year. Game against St. Louis, all these trade stuff is popping up a lot. We lose five to two. Game against Pittsburgh for the second time in week. Come on, boys, beat them. And it's going to be a, another loss. Goddamn. Game against Chicago. That's a team we want to beat. Come on, boys. Why is this taking so long? And finally, I guess there's a big trade. 3 to nothing win. Multiple trades coming in. I can't wait till actually with NHL 21, at least with the trade deadline stuff, so that's going to be more fun. Okay, so we kind of managed to uh, sustain our record a bit, but we do need to start winning a bit more games. We are only four points above still the Blackhawks and only five points above the Blues who are in last. Yikes, this division is absolutely insane. Like We have two teams that are taking off in the Jets and the Red Wings like they normally do. But then afterwards, there's only six points separating third place and last place. So, this is a very tough division. Let's take a quick look at our lines and see if there's any minus lines that we could address potentially before we continue. Yeah, that top line hasn't been uh, has been out there for a lot of goals against. It looks like, but I don't think there's any move that we can make that makes sense for this line. Uh, I could do that. Hmm. But it does get rid of the chemistry on this line, which has been really good. But I think I'm going to... Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I mean, Sidor doesn't really fit that second line though at all. <clears throat> He's a much better fit for that first... Or, yeah, that first line. Hmm, but DeSantis doesn't fit that line really as well either. Hmm. Uh, he's actually not that good at face-offs. Hmm. And we'll leave it like this. I honestly don't know what we could do to make this team better. And I don't think I'm going to make any trades. So let's just quick a quick look at the block again. But I don't think I'm going to make any trades. I'm just going to trust in the process. Because we've had a good start to the season and we've dropped off a lot. So maybe we're... We're going to do good again soon. Ooh, an 87 Bembridge. One year left. Hmm. This guy's actually pretty good. 95 offensive awareness for a third rounder. Wow. But he doesn't fit anything on our team. That guy would have been really interesting to bring in. Because I've never seen that guy that good on the block, really, I don't think, in this franchise mode. Hmm. Anything interesting? Doesn't look like it. Bengtonson's still kind of intriguing, but we don't really have the spot to fill him in. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's really anything out there which really sucks, but hopefully this team could just turn it around a bit. We've been going through a bit of a slump, but hopefully we could pull our, ass, our heads out of our ass a bit. Um, 
who was that? 86 Hodges. It wasn't Hodges just dealt. Oh no, he was signed in the off season. Or no, he was traded in the off season. Yeah, that's right. He's only got one year left. He's a minus 10, but he's got really good stats. He fits our second line. Huh. He only fits our second line, though. Potentially. I don't know if he actually fits our second line or not. Like, if we were to bring in Hodges, we would have to trade away uh, our second line right winger, which is currently Holweg, I think. I don't know if I want to make a trade, though. Yeah, it would be Holweg that we'd have to deal as part of this deal, which they actually want. And then we would probably have to throw in like a pick into this deal, like a third round pick. Uh, and probably something else. What else do they like, just out of curiosity? I don't even know if this guy fully actually matches our system. But Holweg hasn't had the greatest year, I don't think, if I'm not mistaken. How much points has he got? Yeah, he hasn't been great. He's not really... He's more of a third liner. So. Who else could we throw in this deal? We could throw in... They don't want anything else. I mean, I could throw in my second instead, even though they don't want the second. I don't know if that's enough to even get through. Like, we could do our second and third. Let's do a second and fourth first, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm willing to do this deal. So let's try this. Holwig is second and a fourth for Hodges. Even if he doesn't match our system, he's a bit of an upgrade from Holwig. So let's see if this goes through. It's rejected. So let's try our second and third. I don't even know if these are going to work. Second and third. Rejected. Hmm. I could add our fourth rounder as well. Or do they like anything from next year? We could add two third rounders instead of the... Uh, yeah, we'll do a second and two thirds. Yeah, that's a lot to give up. Hmm. Do you think I could fetch back a fourth? Probably not. Apparently, uh, Tampa Bay is also like a contender. But they were willing to give him up for some reason. Does this work? Yep, that is accepted. So, okay, we have gotten rid of Holwig. And we have upgraded our second line right wing spot so hopefully that guy actually matches our system let me just see he made the NHL right he's not in the AHL no he is in the AHL why is he in the AHL okay let's go to edit lines but that's a pretty big acquisition I think because hopefully he fits this team let's see Hodges sniper E6 he doesn't really, but he's still an upgrade. He might actually be better suited for that top line. He is a bit, but... Eh. I think I might just leave that. The same. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. And then he would also yeah go on our power play unit, which is good. Okay, so I think that was a solid trade to make. I wasn't actually planning to make any deals, but to upgrade our right wing spot a bit. And the fact that Holwig hadn't been playing the greatest... I think that's a good move for us. That helps us offensively a bit. Not necessarily defensively, but still. Let's go to the end of the season. We'll go right to, to the end of March first, though. We lose again. Come on, team. There's another loss. My God, this team is not good. 5-3 to three win over St. Louis. 5-4 loss. We're starting to drop in the standings. There's a win over Toronto. A crucial game against Chicago. We lose 5-3. to three. Oh, this is not looking good. Oh my god, I'm going to stop the simulation. We've just dropped multiple games and we're now quite a few points back of a playoff spot. We didn't give up a first rounder though, at least in that deal, but... Yikes, this team is starting to fall apart at the worst point in time. Uh... What could we do to make this team better? Let's go Lindell up to the top line. Yeah, let's try that. Why not? I'm willing to throw anything out in this lineup. How's Callahan being? He's still plus 12. Hmm. Riley hasn't been great defensively, but... Hmm. Drake's actually a better face-off man, so you know what? We'll move Drake there. 
see if that does anything. And then defensively, oh, Aiden Patrick. Patrick is their main problem. I do not like Patrick at all right now. I think he might be one of those players that we end up qualifying if he's an RFA this offseason. Because I think he's not a good fit here. He seems to be minus a lot. And we might end up missing the playoffs because he's a minus 7. Like, let's see. The last wall, uh, playoff spot or wildcard spot has 71 points. So only a couple points above us. If we could go on a good winning streak to end the season, we'll make the playoffs. But if we start losing a lot of games, we're missing the playoffs this year. Okay, we should be able to beat LA. If we don't beat LA, I'm going to be pretty pissed off because they only have 17 wins. Three games this week. Come on, guys. 4-4 tie. You tie with a 17-win team. But we do beat the Islanders, and we lose to Toronto. We're now bottom of our division, but only two points back of that wild card spot. This is coming down to the wire. Are we just going to be barely squeaking the playoffs this year? Game against Montreal and Winnipeg. We lose to Montreal, and we beat Winnipeg, which is big. Because I believe they're a team we're chasing. Let's go to this game against Sweden. Come on, guys. We need wins. There's another win. Two points behind the Maple Leafs. How about in the Pacific? We are tied with the Moose. And we have a game against Moose right now. So this is a big game. Whoever wins this will take over the wild card spot right now. Come on, guys. You got to win this game. In Sweden, come on, Dallas. You can do this. 2-1 to one victory. That is huge. Huge, huge, huge. We got four games left. One of which we should definitely win this LA game. They have 18 wins on the season. And then we got Buffalo. And then we got Chicago and Detroit. So two divisional teams. Come on, guys. Beat LA, please. Win your third or fourth in a row. Yes, there you go. Crucial victory. And we have 80 points now. We're tiptoeing our way with... Uh, Right with uh, Toronto, I think it said. And in their division, the team that's out of the playoff spot has 77. So they're only three points back of us, but they have 80 games by already. We might be getting close to the clear if we could win at least two of these three games. Game against Buffalo. 4-3, overtime victory. That is huge, whoever scored that. Let's go to this game against Chicago. Did we clinch yet? Did we clinch yet? I didn't see if we did with these last two games. 82 points. Yes, we have clinched a playoff spot because of this nice winning streak near the end of the season. Whew, that was really too close for comfort. We might be one of those teams that just barely squeak in and didn't win a lot of games like we did a couple of years ago. 10-3 to victory over Chicago, and then we lose to Detroit. Okay, so we made the playoffs, which is mission success as we finished 38 33 and 8 so a really weird record we finished with 84 points and our division was absolutely stacked everybody in our division had more points than the team that just missed out on the playoffs in the pacific division holy hell okay so we made it let's take a look at our player stats and then we will wrap up the season if the season is actually fully done let me just check that quickly yep it is Let's see what our players did during this year and then around the entire league. And then we'll see who we're up against in round number one. So it was, Wong had 72 points, only a plus one. So he's, yeah, he's been not the greatest defensively in terms of players, but he has been a very good offensive player. So there you go. Anton Lindell, 63 points. Franzen, 28 points. My batteries are low, goddammit. Gotta finish this episode quick. Uh, and Riley had 13 points in uh, 44 games, 11 of which were goals. Not too bad. I mean, he's not necessarily NHL caliber ready yet, but he will be next season, probably like 82 or so, my guess. Left wingers, Sidor had 66, DeSantis 51, Drake 50, and McCardle 25. So pretty good stats actually from our left wingers. Right wing wise, Clancy had 67, Hodges had 66. 19 in 20 with us. So that was a big acquisition for us. And hopefully he can help us out in the playoffs. Definitely a big upgrade from um, 
whole wig, I think. I'll check how a whole wig is doing in Tampa. Um, Antello, 47 points. Callahan, 25. Ewan had 9 and 38. And Markstrom had 9 and 3. As for defensemen, Pavelski with 45 points and a plus 17 in 66 games. If he was only healthy this year, he would have probably had a lot more, but he's up to 133 career points now in 224 games. Really liking his stats so far, and he's listed as a top two defenseman. I don't know why his potential hasn't changed to a medium elite yet, though. Helmer, 28 points. Ozlinch, 25. Patrick, 22, but a minus 5. Soleil, 14. Cullimore, 12. And Vance, 8 and 16. And a plus 17 in 16 games. So he's a perfect depth defenseman for us. Goalie-wise, Jaguar was not great. Like, Depenta outplayed him. Like, I mean, Jaguar had four shutouts, but an 899 and a 291 is not good. So, I don't know what's going to happen with our goaltending situation. Like, if Jaguar is going to stay here for next season or not. Let's take a look at the entire league. See who led the league in points. It's going to be Jeffrey Pasquale of the Rangers with 111. Him and Eric Lindros both tie. Then it's Foot, Goldman, and Ackerland with 105. Leader in goals this season was Pasquale again with 65 goals. And then in terms of, let's just check leather stats, plus minus. Zeller, Pelly Minutes, Jason Smith, okay. Let's take a look at defensemen for points. The leader was Oleg Tverdovsky. Are you kidding me? How did he put up 71 points? Wow, that is weird. This guy was a depth defender last year. 16 points in 20 games. This year he plays a full season and puts up 71 points. Out of nowhere. Hmm. That Detroit team must be really stacked. Uh, Humphreys, 69 points. Valen, 67. Okay, Scott and Niemeyer also up there. And Nick Lidstrom in Chicago. Detroit fans are going to hate to see that. And I mean, I hate to see that too, kind of. Goalie-wise, LeCavalier had the most wins for the Winnipeg Jets. Him and Gostad. Most shutouts this year by a goalie was Selleck with 6. And Mendoza, Niedermeyer as well. Best save percentage by a starting goalie. Would be Gostad with a 9-11. And the best goals against by a starter would be Tierney with a 2.7. Hmm. This year was pretty high up for goals against. Who had the worst goals against for a starter? It's going to be Aguzane with a 3.77. Jeez. Yeah, the LA Kings, not a good season for them. Let's take a quick look at rookie stats. Clemenson led rookies with 62 points. Okay. Yeah, there's an Oscar Moeller. <laughs> That's funny. And rookie goalies. How do rookie goalies do? Let's check by goals against. The best rookie goalie this year by an actual starter was Haley. And then Matthews was pretty good as well. Okay. Let's take a look at team stats. And then we'll get into who we're playing against in the first round. So, entire league-wise, the New York Rangers are your presence trophy winners. Detroit in second, Winnipeg in fourth, Montreal up there as well. Those were the only 100-plus point teams. Hmm. And where did we finish? Probably just barely in a playoff spot, right? 15th. Hmm. Not too bad. Just above the Sweden Moose. If I had to guess, it's going to be one of the these four teams, Toronto, Pittsburgh, us, or Sweden, that ends up winning the Cup this year, just based on the cheese teams. Goals for per game, we were one of the worst goals for per game teams, I think. Were we? I didn't even see where we are. Yeah, wait, eh, around the middle, maybe, 3.16. It's not bad. In terms of goals against per game, we were one of the best defensive teams, so I guess, n never mind, Jaguar had a good season. 2.89 goals against per game. And in power play percentage, our power play was one of the worst. It was just above LA's, and LA had a horrendous season, so that's really bad. And then our penalty kill was also... Uh, our penalty kill was actually pretty solid in 80%. Huh. Interesting. So this year, it looks like we're just a really good defensive team. Hopefully, we can keep that up during the regular season. 
Okay, so let's quickly take a look at who we're up against in round one. My voice is dying because I've recorded multiple episodes in a row, but hopefully it's a team we could beat. And it is going to be the Detroit Red Wings. So for the third straight season, I think, we have a matchup with Detroit in the first round. And once again, Detroit had a really good season. We knocked them out, I think, the last two seasons with them having a really good record as well. Like, I think the first time that we knocked them out, they had 108 points like they do now. And then the second year, I think they were a bit lower than that, but we still managed to knock them out as well. So this is going to be intriguing to see if we can knock them out for the third straight season. I know Chris Osgood, who's their goalie, or one of their goalies, is dropping off. So let's take a look at that roster. So they got Goldman, Lapierre, and Madsen. That's a very nice first line with these two especially. Madsen's kind of good. More of a second, third liner. Second line, they got Omen, Lee, and Reimer. I think this lineup actually looks a lot different than last time we played them. I could be wrong. Stewart, Winquist, and Reimer on the third line. And then they have Kiskinen, Shantz, and Staples on the fourth. So overall-wise, I think we have the offensive depth better than them. It might be around similar because these two guys are really good. And then defensively, they got Tevor Dosky, who had a fantastic season, so we got to watch out for him, even though he's only an 84. They also have Weaver, who's pretty solid. Uh, the rest of the defense isn't the greatest. They have Oda and Alos. They have former defenseman Braden Taves, who we used mostly as a depth guy. Since leaving us, he's been in San Jose, Ottawa, and Detroit. He actually is a depth defender still for Detroit, so they might have an injury. And they also have Amir Gibson. Goalie-wise, they got Bowmick now as their starter and Osgood as their backup. As for depth, they have Maxim Galanov and John Cellini, who we actually had both of them, I think, as well, as a depth guy at one point. Didn't we? Yeah, we had John Cellini way back here as a top six defenseman, briefly. And then I think we had Galanov like a couple seasons ago. Yeah, we did. So that's intriguing, too. So overall-wise, I think we have the defensive upper hand and we have also the goalie upper hand maybe a bit. Maybe it's around even. Offensively, I think I got to give it to them to an extent just because they have the 290s, which we don't like. Well, we have 190. I think we could be pretty balanced in terms of forwards and stuff like that. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Dallas Stars franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take on the Detroit Red Wings in the first round of the playoffs for the third straight season and see if we could get to that second round. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys next time.